here we are again. Uh, we are back. Uh, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Trying to finish up um, the Gilded Cage mission. Also, I passed by a weird monument in the shape of a hand. And it automatically added a new investigation here. It's a treasure hunt. And there's a riddle and everything, but I'm not getting distracted. Uh, looking for a recruiter named Aiden with a scar on his neck. There it is. Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am a digger, you see, and I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar, such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no catch, sir. I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? Um, you said pro-British sentiments, so... I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? What? <laughs> um, I love tea. You know how much I love tea? Once I drank so much of it, my eyes turned brown. Fine. You're a fan. I'll give you that. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural bone digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. Okay. Um. So we're meant to go back then. To there? Okay. Alright. Back to where we came then. Ah, oh, yes. Here is the statue I was referring to. Karim of the Silver Hand, the pirate with a golden heart. All right, here's the card. Stop loitering and get inside. Fine then. Archaeological dig site. Newcomer. Talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with the glasses and the plans. Okay. Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have this spark. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. Okay. Um, I feel like tipping our hand at this point might be a little bit premature. Um, if I should just come out and be like, I know you know Mr. Gildan. What's up with that? Um, should I just work for a while? 
Um, I feel like I should work for a while. I think that's the right way to go. I am ready to work. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on? Saying, just simply saying, the ivory baths might be too much. Um, I'll see treasure. Archaeological treasure. Uh, you're hoping to find something priceless, something that will change our history. Bravo, young man. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's true. We're looking for Vitus Lemonius's tomb. I'll help you. That is my goal as a worker. Good. Listen to me carefully, then. I hate repeating myself. I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything, always return the tools, and don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Swift? Yes, I am the only one and no one else. You hear anything other than that, <coughs> it's a lie. People of your kind can have difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute, memorize my face, and then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look to memorize my superior. Okay. Doesn't seem to be missing any tools or knives or anything. Okay, um, Arthur Swift is an archaeologist attempting to find the tomb of Vitus Limonius on Cardona. Old, poor, cannot take care of himself, let alone afford new clothes or accessories. He entered the field of archaeology, the archaeology solely for financial reasons. His enterprise at the end was a ruse to fleece the rich man. Um... Uses all of his resources to locate his secret site, driven by an obsession to expand on the knowledge of humankind. He does not care about his appearance, nor occasional wounds incurred during research, such as the injured elbow. Um, this explains more of the clues. The money grubber one fits with broken glasses and the pour on the dirty clothes but the knowledge seeker explains the bruises the meticulous notebook uh the indifferent on the dirty clothes his lack of personal life and um his continuing to wear glasses even despite them being broken because they still work well enough to do what he needs to do so i think it's knowledge seeker it explains more of the clues we have I wish I could be as passionate about something as you are, Mr. Swift. You value knowledge and dedication over everything else. It's a long road, young man. A sharp eye and attention to detail are the only stepping stones along this path. You have to sacrifice everything you love for the larger prize. Exactly. So much in life is uh, superficial. I wish more people would understand. I never heard a truer word, lad. Folk will ignore what truly matters in life, and for what? Convenience. Bold words indeed. I doubt that many scientists would be willing to support their bragging with fieldwork. The academic world is full of restrictions. Our honorable professors are too afraid to dirty their hands. God forbid if they have a stain on their shirt. You can follow in my footsteps. You can start learning by returning to work. Show me what you can find. All 
right. Alright, this is similar to the plans that we already saw. This is where the ivory baths are supposed to be. There is a statue here, which they did find. This reminds me of my father's room. Your father's fucking weird. A plan for this whole operation. Near the city of Corinth, British archaeologist Sir George Griffiths has discovered the well-preserved tomb of Roman legate Titus Lamonius. So we're finding something that's already been found. Owner of the legendary twin sword of Romulus, gifted by Augustus himself, the first emperor of the Roman Empire. In an exclusive interview, Sir George has described the find as a priceless edition of the history of humankind. The entrance was found by the removal of several blocks of soil around prominent statues, revealing the tomb. According to Sir George, the statues represent the life of Titus, a female statue, presumably a mother, holding a basket of fruits, looks to locate blah 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 blah. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. Did I get all of them? Um, anything back here? No. There's the statue. Looking around, see so if there's any more clues. This is another book. All right, it is. Focus pictures. Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> A guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert. You, what was so important about these books? Or did you simply need some kindling? It's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. So, we catch a monkey, a langa, for example, then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? It will make us forever young, Sherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, I am so done with this. What the fuck are no, you No, wait. On? Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. What the fuck was... Did the Romans live in amphoras? I see nothing else here. John is starting to fucking lose it, man. What the hell? That didn't make any sense. Somehow the text remains legible. Somehow. Let's see if I remember my Latin. Let us rest nearby. Beware the one who wishes to disrupt a sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother in the autumn wind. A sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. A goddess? A mother. Someone's wife. Um. Oh. Pedestal. There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like. According to that article, wherever it went, um, female statue, an allegory of the minor wind god Zephyrus. Looking west with a basket of fruits in her hand. Looking east was another female statue. 
Eurus with a sickle. Okay. Looking east, so. I'm supposed to be looking in this direction. How it ended up in that position is a little bit odd. Titus and Vetus. Stuck. If I go in there, am I going to be... Okay, they actually won't let me in there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Swift lost his temper when he... Say what? Swift lost his temper when he learned what happened to the statue. Uh-oh. Briggs of the Dick Side found a statue with a lion helmet head. It originally lay on the pedestal closest to the beach. When someone kicked it over the edge. As a result, the statue broke and the pedestal remains tilted. Quite daunting to see how deep the dig is. It's quite a fucking kick. Quite a kick. Right. Is it possible to get down there? Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. Message in a bottle. I can come down here, but there's no reason to. What the hell? Do I need to pin evidence? Working and living by the sea. What a dream. All right. Um, I haven't gone down into the ruins yet, so I guess that's where I'll go. Well, there's nothing down here anyway. May I ask you something? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. See if we can get in here now. Do you know anything about this? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. No? Okay, alright, what the fuck? Um. Take a shovel and dig. Am I supposed to literally do that? Just 
No, apparently not. Can't examine that. I've kind of lost the plot a little bit. I'm not really remembering exactly what I should be doing. So... I feel like this has very little to do with the death of Mr. Guild, and I think that, that has more to do with Paul. But I'm not really sure how to advance. The Romans that. live in amphoras. I see nothing else here. And why can I come down here? Okay. Um. is a mystery to solve here, but I don't really feel like that's the purpose of uh, what, I'm, what I'm here for. Now. Um, let's see. There's nothing else to inspect. Can I miss anything in here? Would sure be nice to find the remains of that statue that fell. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. Can I talk to Mr. Swift again and... Tell him that I the jig is up. Do I need to change? Wait. Here's something. What are these here for? Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. Why would you need to have those? Titus and Vitus. Lemonius were legendary legates of the early Roman Empire, starting their military career to suppress the riots of the Bellovaci and Elabroges. They were the key commanders during the siege of Mutina and the Battle of Actium. And the new Emperor Augustus, the brothers, received twin swords, presumably the ones previously belonging to Romulus and Remus. Brothers served as legates to conquer the Dalmatian and African provinces and were famous for their worship of minor gods. Titus honored Eurus while his brother prayed to Zephyrus. Not much is known about the brothers except for the description by Pliny the Elder. Titus wore the skin of a lion with its head on the helmet, a tradition he picked up while being a signifier. Titus held a shield large enough to cover the sky through the exact... Though the exact locations of the tombs remain unknown, historians know that Titus died in the spring of 10 AD, while Vitus in the autumn of 12 AD. Okay. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues. <laughs> Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make tent sails and more. I didn't 
seem particularly terribly useful. Take a shovel and dig. All right, we got stuff here. Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. He's got darts as well. Maybe it is time to change clothes. Okay, change clothes. Those diary documents. Ah, but this is what I was looking for. Um, basket of fruit. Looking to the west. Looks to the east. Two brothers, Titus and Vitus. Okay. Arthur has fresh bruises on his elbow. Mm, I don't think so. Um, is this something I'm able to do with that now? Closest to the beach was the one with the lion helmet. And then we've got the one. Oops, wait. Did I get turned around? I did. I got turned around here when I assumed it. When I assumed John's identity. Lion head. Shield. Bearer. She's supposed to face east. She is supposed to face west. Basket of fruit. I believe that is it. It seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. Much apparently. And the location of the tomb. Okay. It's leading me to the beach. I guess that explains why I can come down there. Oh, I see. They're digging in the wrong place. <laughs> Here is your discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this. What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend! You found? What, I don't even get to see? What? Um. Probably not the right tool for the job. And also, what? I can see that this dig is in good hands. You guys keep at it. I'm gonna go look at those 
darts I found on your table that I wasn't allowed to touch before, so... See you. Darts. Indeed. They are the Box same. Of darts. Handy against rodents of all same kinds. number missing, too. That's a little odd. Um, what's this? More books to collect for no reason. Tusks and trunks provide the most rigorous scientific description. Mm. Okay. Eating season. Doing some research on that. It's a little weird. Curiosity has led us all to some strange places, so. Personal diary owned by Arthur Swift. He describes in considerable detail his personal life and research. More importantly, he tells of a dispute between the archaeologist and Theodore Gilden over the dig site. Day 1224, Theodore always uses his wealth to shut down complaints. I didn't rather he bought a brain with more... <sighs> Jesus. Don't tell me that... <sighs> so he was trying to use this land for development. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Reading your diary. Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary, and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir. What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you? Mr. Holmes. Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. Okay. Um, well, where were you this morning? Would be a good question were to start with. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. What kind and of a question is that? And you aren't surprised, shocked. I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. I mean, he seemed pretty surprised when he found out to me, but all right. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Will you allow me to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. Okay. Um, yeah, what's up with the darts, dude? What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. Okay. Um. You have a weakness for nostalgia. Or, rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. Uh -huh. But very you aren't answering this. the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. 
true. Uh, I am not going to ask him why he was researching elephant mating habits. Just yet, anyway. Um... Should I ask him about the bruises on his elbow? Mm. What do you know about Paul and the darts? Moving on. Okay. What do you know about Paul in general? Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen <clears throat> Gildon? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. Okay. Moving on. What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our okay. workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. All right, if you say so. At least I'm not, you know, researching with this book, elephant you attempted to habits. plan an attack on the elephant. <coughs> My insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gildon made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. Mm -hmm. I've nothing to add. Yeah, you're welcome, by the way. I've nothing to add. As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. So, you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place, this caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? You're still relatively young that you might find your own Laura. Perhaps I envy, Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's all. You happy now? Wonderful. Oh my god, what else? Moving on. Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. Okay. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. Gildan's Elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No, animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? 
I don't need you it. Literally, do there it's right there on your vest. uses for it on the site and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. It's Holmes. literally right there. <laughs> I, I don't know. Apparently, I'm a busy I man. haven't asked him about the right Did Evans this plan yet. cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gildon? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind. Nothing less and nothing more. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't believe that he's the killer. I still think, even without having talked to Paul, that he's way more likely. Um, but we have we, this is this case, a gilded cage has more evidence than any of the other side uh, quests that we've done so there's just so much information here um but according to this we still have something to do here with paul so i guess that's where i got i guess i'm gonna go back to the um with ultra it was mating season no turning times no Okay, can't do anything with that yet. Arthur protected his research. I, I don't think that he was responsible for this. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Um... All right, I'm going to hop to a meeting. I'll be back in just a moment. Well, it'll, it will be some time for me, but for you, it will be instantaneous. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> see, where was I? I think we were about to head back to the Yacht Club because that was our last lead. We got to get out of here first. Apparently, we can't fast travel from this point, even though it's outside. Or apparently outside. I realize that, technically speaking, it's going to be an interior cell, but you know what I mean. Okay. It's a lot of back and forth, but, I mean, we went here to find Paul. We didn't find Paul, so we missed something. We don't have his next location. We don't have his current location. This is... The last lead we have leads us to the yacht club, to the boat workshop, and that's that's that. So, all in the trail, I guess. All right, can I go in? Are any of these doors enterable? Did I miss a door? Can do I go on the boat? Here, there's the fog, fog machine. Horn to navigate and warn others at sea. Fog horn, not fog machine. Oh, apparently I missed this. Tea caddy not smeared. Undeniably psychotropes, not for toothache, I think. A typical tea tin. I wonder what he has for biscuits. place where Paul Perks works. In the room with the whirlpool plaque, I noticed a bloodied bandage. The storage room held evidence that Paul is involved in organized crime, smuggling psychotropics on the yacht. That's a really stupid place to keep that. Okay. Is there more here? Well, John's gone, so... Oi! Hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Okay. Champion, you mean. I was right. You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. 
Who are you? <laughs> I'm really thrown off by the voice, and I apologize, but it's so clear that they got a woman to do the voice. It's off-putting. Um... I'm Imogen's friend. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. Stand still for a moment. Observe. Oh, okay. Well, that explains the voice, then. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I, I do not mean to be insulting in any way. Um, all right. Okay, um, Paul Perks is a woman who disguises herself as a man to achieve a higher social position. She uses the privileges of men to pursue her personal goals. She puts all of her effort into sport, even though it comes with the occasional accident on the open sea. Bruises and an injured arm are badges of honor. Uh, and yet, that is a man's prerogative. Um... I see no reason to disclose this to anyone else or a professional smuggler. Um, uh, the only I mean, we did have... She is a gambler, and we did see some notes threatening her. We do see psychotropics. But I don't think the psychotropics are for smuggling. I think the psychotropics are what she used to drug the elephant. And I think that the connections to organized crime with the betting are uh, involved in her trying to uh, trying to sway her to throwing races. I don't know. I, she's definitely not on the up and up. I mean, in my opinion, but I don't think she's necessarily that. I think that she is a professional yachtsman or yachtswoman. I'm not actually sure on the pronouns to use here because the guide is using is saying she, but I don't know if this is merely a disguise or if it's an issue with gender identity. Um, I think I think that's professional yachtswoman here. I think she's responsible, but I don't think that she's, like, evil, smuggler, bad guy. I think that there's something else going on here. There's a piece I'm missing. impressed by how well a woman can handle a yacht and endure so many hardships on the open sea. The revelation of your nature could well humiliate so many rich men here. Not to mention how you have broken the rules. But I understand. You've done this to forge a real career in the sport. But tell me something. Has no one asked you why you don't grow a beard? Shh. Have you been following me? You better not be wanting to end my career, because I swear you'll regret it if I get out it. Damn you, Paul. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you... pals interact Aww. with each other in your natural habitat.
but I'm afraid I have to interfere. Okay then. If we must. I'm coming for you. No more. Take a rest, my friend. Can Too that, simple. Can that be it? The snuff's ready. Dodge this! Whoa! What the oh, he's got a, he's got a helmet on. I couldn't miss the party. No more crime for you until next month. Time to knock this guy out. Ah. <laughs> Too simple. I'm coming. I can overcome the brute now. <laughs> Don't bother me. Fucking bottles. No more crime for you and the snuff's ready. I will end you. Don't bother moving. You've give him the pepper snuff. Thank you. And there's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice. Okay. So, where'd Paul go? In here? Yeah. Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps then, don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? <sighs> You've talked with them already. Yeah. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gilden is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual <clears throat> way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. I mean, honestly, yeah. You're asking for trouble with this smuggling business. You'd better leave it before they smuggle you out in a barrel. Don't patronize me. I've only ever had trouble with law-abiding citizens like Gilden and you. Never bandits. They just came here to so kill you. So ask me anything you want, and then get out of my sight. What's up with the darts? Okay, I guess we'll start at the top here. I'm clueless. Yeah, no I'm shit. clueless. Yeah, said a mouthful. 
You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my Getting customers. Horn there, huh? Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing Whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. A. Swift. Are you familiar with this name? The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildon was. Perhaps this swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is, but I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that court owner has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh, abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless. But it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me, it was frightening. It seems as though Theodore Gildon hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words or something more serious? <sighs> Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. I'm clueless. I don't know what this means. I don't know what you're suggesting. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I don't know what you're suggesting. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this, an installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures, why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. Okay. I don't know what you're suggesting. I'm clueless. Look what I found. A box full of darts. What's with the hey, darts? That's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human. Yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal? Say, hmm, an elephant? I've never tried. But I have wondered. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. 
That's some mm -hmm. um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we plan to go traveling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Okay. There's so much information in this case. See, so now it's switching the pronouns. They. Okay. Everyone blames Goliath for the mating season. Okay. Ah, the perfume. The ultimate Goliath was present for Mr. Gildan's death and may hold answers to how it happened. He is presently in heat, which can take advantage to lure him out, which I can take advantage of to lure him out. I have an idea of how to do just that, but we'll need several items. Sturdy gray fabric that can hold gas. An instrument to mimic an elephant's trumpeting call. Strong scent. Okay. Okay. All right. Chemical analysis on the perfume. <coughs> Two, one, negative four. Extract the pheromones. Right, mine pedals. Cage. Arthur may have been at the crime scene. Arthur's hook may have been at the scene. Paul may have been at the scene. Okay. Not entirely sure just yet.
Okay, so I need the foghorn and the um It might fall an elephant. Canvas from the dig site. up here. Stop lock. This fabric will work. Mrs. Nini seemed to know her sewing inside out. Uh, I bet she missed us. I hope Miss Nini won't misunderstand me. Knights Road, Trinity Way, and Scott. Was there more to research? No. I saw the icon for the Chronicle and I thought maybe I missed something. Um, police station right around the corner. <clears throat> I've come to you with a special requirement. The tailors on the street can't help me, I'm afraid. Could you make a doll for me? Oh, Signor Holmes. You taught the police how to do their job, and they found the thief. Of course I will help you. But what sort of doll? A child's doll, such as my great niece might play with? Um, a little larger than your typical doll. Signore, I don't understand. Boy, girl, animal, and what color? Animal, um, a passionate, perhaps amorous animal. <laughs> oh, Will signore, you make me a horny you elephant talk in riddles. <laughs> I am an old lady who's seen it all. Tell me what you need. I need a life-size elephant. I think Mrs. Nini outdid herself with this one. Is that a tail? That's a trunk, John, but I must agree with you that it's a masterpiece. Well, let's not waste any time. It seems awful small for a life size, but I think. Yeah. Um. And now. Uh, and we go to apparently the. <sighs> Mr. Gildan's house, apparently. game is on. So what's the plan? I hope it all doesn't go horribly wrong. We know that the elephant is seeking a female. We can arrange that. 
A doll with the appropriate scent might do miracles. So you're a marriage broker? Well, I suppose that makes me a groomsman. Oh, she is a bit breezy, I must say. Well, Goliath is eager for a single female elephant in his area. It should be just enough for his taste. You'll need to trust me. Are we ready? I can't stand the tension. We're ready. Let's call the elephant. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um uh, I guess um I, I'm not sure what the difference is be I do between the I guess we'll start with this one. <laughs> How could anyone resist? Lines? <laughs> I knew a lady once who said just that. <laughs> Too bad I'm not an elephant. Take your time, Sherry. Well, there's only one more. That deserves a slap, and then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend. Oh my god. to leave it. I assure you that it is only a temporary measure. It won't be long until the elephant is gone, I promise you. Okay. You know... You know who I think is actually responsible for this? I bet it was Imogen. I bet she was jealous of the whole second child thing and all that crap and wanted to run away with her significant other and I bet this is all her fault let's see I see a scratch here on the line it injured itself while running through the forest I suppose that makes sense uh, uh -huh, a dart. There's something in the needle. A feathered fletching. This might be promising. The left tusk is larger and more worn. You're a left tusk elephant. Peaceful and compliant, almost a gentleman. Alright, let's see what's in that needle, and that will tell us. Who's responsible for this? Two, negative six, and five. Um... Oh. 
Alright, we don't need this. And then we just need... And we need, oh, we have a new symbol here, I didn't see. What is that? Multiplies by two. Okay, well then that's fine. That was most certainly a better way to do that. Strychnine. This amount could kill a human, but was not enough to topple such a large animal. Instead, it most likely aggravated the elephant, causing a fit of rage. Well, all right then. I think it was deliberate. Do we have any information that it might have been a I mean we don't I guess we don't really have any evidence that it would be intentional but somebody shot a dart and nobody admitted to doing it so In a fit of rage, Goliath killed Theodore Gildan. After a quick one-sided confrontation, the elephant fled, leaving Gildan to come to his interest. Goliath killed his own master. Theodore Gildan nurtured the animal, cared for him, but the wild nature of the beast makes him extremely dangerous to others. I should inform Imogen that his execution is the only way to ensure safety. Goliath is a wild animal, and his captors are the ones responsible for his behavior. The elephant requires a new owner in a home. I should discuss this with Imogen. Any possible options as well? Yeah. It's not the fucking elephant's fault. I, I mean, if it's as simple as that, then yes. I thought I was trying to find out if somebody was responsible, but if it's a question of whether or not the elephant should be saved, then y y uh, yeah, obviously. Okay. Was the elephant shot before or after Theodore's death and does it matter? I mean, I would say that it does matter. Because in one case it's murder and in the other case it's not. Mind Palace is flashing again. Goliath may have killed Theodore. I mean, yes, it may have provoked him. And suddenly I can't... My conclusion is gone, suddenly. Uh... Oh, 
this is all me. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I think I need I think I need to talk to the engine. I don't really somebody shot that fucking dart. That's the only thing that's tripping me up right now. Somebody shot that dart. And there was a reason that they did it. It was either I I don't think it was Swift. I think it might have been Paul. But did he do it on purpose? And why wouldn't he admit to it if he didn't? Let's go talk to Imogen. I think that Imogen might be responsible. Okay, let's talk about this dart. I don't have any thoughts on this. How do you not have any thoughts? I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. I have nothing to say about this. I have nothing to say about this. Have you seen what your father sent to Paul? This is despicable. My father was never a gentleman, but this crosses the line. I knew that father wasn't fond of Paul, but this... This is just awful. If only he could have seen how good Paul he is to me. Did you know that Paul is a woman? Or, I mean, it's none of my business, but I just need to know if you know. I have nothing to say about this. Really? You have nothing to say about that? Are you aware that Paul smuggles drugs for a dangerous gang? Mr. Holmes, I've already told you. I call him a pirate in play. He's not an actual pirate. He's a champion and a brave gentleman, not a thug. Let us agree to disagree on that. But don't be surprised if one of his clients knocks on your door. If I say she was right about Goliath, does that mean that... Does that mean that I'm condemning Goliath to die? Because that's not the conclusion I reached. Oh, let's see what happens. You were right I saved about Goliath. It, so. Everyone confirmed your opinion. They all agree that the beast is vicious. The animal wielded two tons of rage, and Mr. Gildon regrettably didn't stand a chance. The mating season only served to amplify its temper. Oh, spare me. That's a little too much detail, thank you. What is the point of this conclusion? How do you plan to use your findings? Somebody shot the dart. Miss Gildon, I know how much you dislike the elephant. Rather more than dislike. I wish I could have done more to that wretch than just speak of it. But it's innocent. Goliath did not intend to kill your father. It was provoked, scared, and in mating season. Your father took Goliath's normal state for granted, and in doing so made a mistake that caused the elephant to be aggressive. Stop it! I already know the answer. I don't need your moral perspective on this situation. I don't know why you wasted your time. I actually did more than you. Which involved what, Miss Gildon? A man with a big wallet made an offer to take the elephant away. I accepted it. I was so naive thinking that it was me who was so helpless. But you are useless too. I am glad that the elephant is no longer of your concern, but I need to make sure. I don't care and I don't want to listen. Mm. Thought you wouldn't turn up. Why is that? Well, I suppose it's the English way to leave without saying goodbye, but I never planned to abandon you. Because you brought the filthy beast here because you did nothing to ensure its proper punishment. I had to do everything, not you. I was piecing together your father's murder. There was nothing to piece together. I told you, it was Goliath. I never asked you to talk with anyone. I asked you to find stupid animal. Even if my efforts are invisible, that does not mean that I did nothing. I don't have the strength to argue. These are my father's belongings. They're about your mother. Take them all and leave me be. I won't waste your time any longer, Miss Gildon. 
Thank you for your help. Hmm. I'm gonna go back. The dart is bothering me. I want to see what happens if I go... Oh, really? Oh, fuck's sake. It's really bothering me. Somebody shot that dart and nobody owned up to it. I'm gonna see what happens if I go with this route. It seems more correct than simply it being it. Because I would buy, 100%, I would buy that it was an accident, that Goliath was in, was in heat and all that, if it weren't for the fucking dart. If it weren't for that dart, I would say 100% it's fine. <clears throat> I don't have any thoughts on this. I don't have any thoughts on this. I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. I have nothing to say about this. Have you seen what your father sent to- This- I... I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. Are you a- this Let us agree to disagree. You were right. The animal wielded- Oh, spare me. That's a- What is- Still like Goliath's- Miss oh. Gildan, I know how much you dislike the elephant, but your father took- Stop it! I already know the- I don't know why you wasted your time. Which involved- A man with a big wallet made an- But you are you- I am glad way. that the elephant is no longer- I don't care- I thought you wouldn't turn up. Why is that? I suppose- I- I- There was nothing to- Even if my efforts- I- I won't waste your time. So I'm not sure if both of my conclusions were wrong or what, but whatever. My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. Why would she give it to him? She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. My dear Theodore, you know I value our friendship more than most other bonds we share. The same restless soul and your acceptance is so great. Must hang on, then. It's a grateful to turn a face on a cigar and I join the same expedition as you changed my life for the better. Nevertheless, I'm not blind nor a hypocrite. I know that your feelings towards me have deepened. Forgive me, Theodore, but I do not feel as you do. I must spare you the pain of one sided love before it's too late. We see the enclosed necklace you so thoughtfully gifted in remembrance of our adventure together. I cannot in good conscience continue to wear it. I know this letter will cause you such hurt, and for that I can un but apologize deeply. Your heart is with my yeah, my heart is with Seeger, who is still unaware of your desires. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go? We definitely should. So I'm not sure what the correct ending to the Gilded Cage is because they both resulted in the same thing and she didn't say anything about Paul the second time. So I guess we are fine. Not sure. You know, I envy you, Sherry. 
You can talk to other people and they won't ignore you. And I envy you. You can ignore any person you're bored with. You don't miss out on much. Most men are dull, unlike yourself. Well, I'm flattered. Home sweet home, Sherry. Okay. Oh, I thought in the dream sequence that it was one of the doors up here that they were pointing to. Was it this one instead? Another one. No. Okay. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. All right, this one then. Another one. There must. Oh, right. I must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Oh, it's the mirror. The weird ass mirror. Surprise for my mother. I was holding an ancient Greek vase, or rather, quite a big piece of it. You had a shovel with you, John. I remember now, we dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona and were eager to show my mother right away. Okay. For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody answered. We thought that she was busy. So we left the vase and ran downstairs. I decided to gather some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Yes. It came from upstairs. The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor. And your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. Otto Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. Her things are still here. Presumably Mycroft never felt the need to sort through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to. No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality. Okay. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. I'm more interested in the medicines there, since her you know, illness is called into question. Look what I found! <clears throat> the White King is under attack. Sherry, can you save him and checkmate the opponent in one move? Are you... You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. Okay, I can't actually can interact any time so. you want. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. <clears throat> and here is the reason. So, she, you don't know what her illness was, dude. Go through them. And we're not interested in the weird handprint. The last few months I've asked Miss Holmes to sketch some landscapes. The first few were clear and accurate, but subsequent drawings quickly drifted from reality. <clears throat> it appears her disease progresses rapidly and perhaps even affects her vision. May need to consider trepanation. Brain surgery. <clears throat> Obituary. London, 21, 1865. Zigger Moreland Holmes, the renowned archaeologist, authenticator... And historian is dead, a mere 41 years of age. He was seized by a cardiac event during the opera at the 
<clears throat> Covent Garden Theater on Saturday. <clears throat> Despite a physician's best efforts, he remains insensible and died at 20 minutes past 6 o'clock in the evening. Sudden end came as a severe shock to his large circle of acquaintances. Mr. Holmes was survived by his wife, Violet, two sons, Mike Croft, 16, and Sherlock, six funeral services. <clears throat> Will be held Wednesday at the Highgate Cemetery of St. James by Reverend W.E. Stanley. It's a strange feeling <clears throat> to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall anything except... The deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before we even met. It's so sad. I'm sorry. Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not. Unlabeled bottle. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. It looks like... Could be mercury. There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. <laughs> 19th May, 1868. Initial consultation revealed the patient suffered sleep problems, periods of anxiety, psych confusion, and memories. Prescribed a strong sedative to be administered daily and will continue to monitor symptoms. 3rd of August, 1868. Sedation has helped minimize anxiety attacks, but Miss Holmes <clears throat> now experiences. <clears throat> Sorry, frog in my throat. Catatonia, apathy, and prolonged depressive states. Moreover, the patient's confusion has worsened, and she has begun writing letters to her deceased husband as if he were alive. I have prescribed six further drugs to balance her mental state and weekly hydrotherapy. Wow, Otto Richter sounds like a terrible doctor. 27th November, 1868. The current drug regimen has delivered middling results with confusion worsening to near constant delusion. The patient grows aggravated when these beliefs are contradicted, prompting aggressive behavior. I have now witnessed several episodes of violence against her own family and towards herself. Consequently, I ordered that bars be installed on the windows and that Mrs. Holmes be strapped to her bed at night. The dosage of all medications has been raised. I have prescribed the patient additional hypnotherapy sessions as well as some mild hallucinogens. Nineteenth century medical care. I have seen that bridge. This picture was drawn by my mother. I recognize her hand. There's a date on it, 8th of December, 1868. I would say that those landscapes are just fine because I recognize that bridge immediately. Come on, rotate. This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. Okay. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. The house we're in right now. There's no date at all. And there are straps, straps on the bed. It just doesn't look right. Potassium bromide. Seems this was the most frequently used medication. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily. Not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. My gentle Seeger, alas, I am still yet to receive any correspondence from you. One presumes my previous letters are chasing you around the continent as you travel. I hope you are in good health and already on your way home. Forgive my impatience, but life without you, <clears throat> without your kind voice and bright eyes, is scarcely worth living. The boys need their father around too. I can tell that they miss you, although as you well know, Mycroft does not want to wear his heart on his sleeve. In case my prior letters have been lost, know that we have relocated to Cordona. Please come back soon. Oh, it brings back some memories. Oh, I would love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. For medical purposes, I suppose. 
Yeah, and there appears to be a straight jacket of some kind in there. Although it's, I mean, it's not a straight jacket, but it is some kind of restraint. Yeah, it is some kind of restraint or medical device for maybe lowering patients into and out of the bathtub. Pause. <clears throat> Covering the windows from the inside. Okay, um... I suppose we'll do this one first. Defend the king of bishop. Save the king by retreating. I can barely see the board. Okay. All right, well, if we defend the king with the bishop, then the bishop will take bishop. And if I remember the rules of chess correctly, we should be able to then take the bishop with impunity, as well as the pawn. But the rook can also come down and threaten the king. If we retreat with the king, the bishop's going to get taken anyway by either the rook, yeah, by the rook. That seems like we should defend. Ah, oh, nice move. You saved the king and checkmated the black king with the rook. Oh, that, that was our rook. Never mind. Well, apparently I got it correct anyway. Completely accidentally. So. Okay. <clears throat> uh, chemical analysis on the weird medicine. Six, negative ten, negative three. And we have another new symbol. Divide, multiply, okay. Um, so we can multiply this. We can multiply this. Do we have a negative three anywhere? We got this, which we can reverse and then increment. And now we can put it together. Hallucinogen derived from mushrooms. Okay. And... The broken plate shards were all over the floor. Mycroft had to change his suit as the one he was wearing was completely stained. Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning. Okay. Um, yes, Mycroft. Yeah, I don't think he ended up getting stabbed. Be that one because the tray ended up over here. I guess it must be this. 
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Okay. Um... supposed to be you're not even trying Sherry how in the fuck am I supposed to even I don't I, it's got to be this one although the tray ends up over there as well Oops. No, oh, this is the one I wanted to change. So then, what? She ends up with the tray and... Oh, I see. There's the plates falling. Okay. So then, yeah, he ends up... Getting splatted with the stuff on the tray. Okay. That makes sense. I don't believe you! Liars! Get away from me! It's not true! It's not real! What? Ugh. Oh. Everything will be okay, Sherry. I promise. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died. My mother was anxious and hysterical. She threw food and shouted at the doctor, calling him a liar. John and I brought her morning tea, but when the shout started, I became scared. The only thing I could think to do was hide near the bed and wait for everything to pass. Thankfully, John was there to protect me and calm me down. My, my mother, she, she was not just ill, but mad. God have mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more, John. I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. John! Every time you... I, I just don't... Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. I... I know. But can we at least leave it for another day? Um, we gotta continue. It cannot wait. Let us find another door and finally learn the truth. That's pointless, Sherry. To date, you have had no control over the return of these memories. It is all triggered by your work elsewhere on Cordona. You must accept that this will have to wait. Are you all right? Um, yeah, I'm fine. You're the one who's end, little has freaking changed. out here. My mother was still unwell, just not with tuberculosis. What I do not yet understand is why Mycroft lied about it. There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait. Did you hear that? Yes. Metallic souls. What is this sailor doing here? Good question. Sherlock Holmes, isn't it? I was looking for you. The metallic souls he's talking about are hobnailed shoes. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You can call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone so must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose. You're a fast learner, sir. Okay. Pink shit on your head. Um, artist disguise a sailor. He can show no signs of regular physical activity, no corns, no skin. The artists know 
my name or where I live, so Vogel best fits the role of the game master or sailor artist. Um, I think it's probably... Yep, I'm guessing it's this one. It's a Vogel again. I cannot believe that Mr. Vogel has somehow successfully called my attention to his gallery. You're here with an invitation to visit it, obviously. My word, you are fast, Mr. Holmes. Could you explain how you came to that conclusion? Of course. Explanations are my favorite part of any conversation. Hands without any sign of regular physical activity in contradiction to one who would most usually wear such a uniform. The paint in your hair is pink. I don't know of any military service that paints their ships pink unless they have launched a new fashionable fleet. A sailor with the soul of an artist? I would suggest rather a gallery employee disguised as a sailor to mislead me. How many artists on the island know where I live and of my passion for deduction? Werner Vogel is clearly at the top of the list. And you've been attempting to conceal something square-shaped within your pocket. An invitation, I suppose. An invitation to Mr. Vogel's gallery. That was remarkable, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Vogel was right about your genius. I think he may have even underestimated you. This is your invitation. Please tell Mr. Vogel that the seed has been planted. He asked me to tell you to do so, if you win this little game. Farewell. I think about you experience my art expedition, exp exhibition, not only do the Bazaar Road and Hermes Avenue in Old City. Okay, you can leave now. See ya. Thanks for coming. Wonderful visit. Get the fuck out of here. Sanity. All right. <clears throat> um, okay. Guess that's that. Um, I I think that's probably enough. We, oh, jeez, yeah. I've been almost two hours here. All right, then I guess that'll be it uh, for today. Next time, I'm, I don't think I'm going to push forward here with the Muse from Abroad. I think what I would like to do is take care of some of these Cordona stories. Um, Maybe do the for the birds and possibly the pirate treasure or something. Um... How much money do I have? I have also have 96 money. And the, uh, the reason that I want to do that is because there's more furniture to buy, but I don't know which store is currently the one that we... Oh, I do. I do see that. Okay, so next time we'll buy some furniture and do some side quests. Okay. Take care. See you next time. Have a good day. Goodbye.